takes about 30 some seconds to bring the jump back and get ready for the next guy. We have two catapults, we'll launch once every 45 seconds. 45 seconds looks like this. Now I have my props. Um, well, when we first started out, we didn't think it was gonna, gonna go too well today. It was rainy. Yeah, and well, it also was raining at 10 o'clock this morning. The airplane, Brian will go down into his ready room. He'll get his airplane. He'll read the last five flights in the maintenance vlog. Then he'll get his brief on where he's going today, what he's going to do, who's going to go with him, what the frequencies are, what the mission entails, all that. He'll then go up on the flight deck and find his plane captain and his airplane. And he'll walk around the airplane pre-flight and get ready to go. He'll climb up the board, get all tightened down in his, in his parachute and everything. And when it's time, they'll start him up and he'll start coming down the deck in the stack, as it's called. And when it's his turn, he'll come across this rectangle right here. That's a jet blast deflector. As soon as he clears it, it'll come up and that'll keep the blast from his engine from going into the, the crowd behind him. You have to imagine this now. Stay with me for a second here and use your imagination. We've got 30 knots of wind coming over the bow. That in itself is noisy. I mean, we're sitting here maybe five, six knots. This is pleasant. 30 knots is noisy. Then we add 10 or 15 jets to that, and you cannot hear. Everything we do on this deck is done with colors and hand signals. It's too noisy to even consider it. You can scream at your husband all you want, and he's going to smile at you because he can't hear you. It's not the same as when he's watching TV. This is real noise. Yes, there we go. So everything's done with colors. Red guys, ordnance guys, green guys, maintenance guys. They don't actually do maintenance. What they do is they assure that we're hooked up correctly in the cab. Brown shirts, plane captains, aircraft handler. He's the one that moves you around the deck. And they work in sections. When you get to the edge of your territory, he turns you over to somebody else. It's like a ballet. Bear in mind now, it is noisy, it's one of the most dangerous places to work in the world, and the guy directing me around is about 19 years old. Now, Dad, he's the one that couldn't get the lawn mowed. You start 9 o'clock in the morning, and he'd go, yeah, I'll get it done in just a couple minutes, Dad. 1.30, you've lost your patience. You yell at him. He finally mows it, sort of, you know. And Mom, he's the one that dropped his clothes right where he was standing. And it didn't matter where he was, either. He just... Now, two years later, here he is. He's out here and he literally has my life in his hands. And I can tell you this, he's good. He's well trained, he's quite responsible, he's smart. Some of the best kids we've ever had in the Navy are out there today. He comes home on leave, he's still gonna drop his clothes anywhere because he thinks you'd like to pick him up. <laughs> so here we are, this is the cast of characters we have. Once we get through, the blast deflector comes up, the first guys that appear are the red guys. Ordnance, one on either side. They come over here, they look at Brian and they wait for Brian to put his hands up so that they know he's not touching anything. Pilots are like little children, they like to touch things. Because he's gonna pull the pins so that they'll drop off the airplane and he's gonna hook up the electrical connections so that they'll fire an arm. And he doesn't want me playing with them. So he'll run around, he'll do all that, and then he comes right back up here and he holds up five pins. I know I have five weapons on this wing. I'll give him a thumbs up. I'll turn to the other side. On the other side, his counterpart's there holding pins from that side. I'll give him a thumbs up and they disappear. The next thing that happens is one of our green fellows comes up and he's going to ask me a question. When I pre-flighted the airplane, I knew it was 38,000 pounds and I write it on the gear door. So he comes up with a weight board and he holds it up there in the form of a question. Do you still weigh 38,000 pounds? If I do, I give him a thumbs up. He will then hold the board so that the guy sitting out here in the deck can see it and they will set the steam pressure for 38,000 pounds. They're sitting right out there in the middle. Once they give him a thumbs up, he and his weight board disappear. We then bring Brian up into the catapult itself. Two things are going to happen up here. 
I'm going to bring Brian up. He's going to drop the launch bar down into the shuttle track. The shuttle will be yeah, so far away from it. And then we're going to tie Brian down. We're first going to hook Brian up to the deck of the carrier. This is called the launch bar. This is called the dog bone. This goes into the landing gear of the airplane. This goes into the deck of the carrier. We can take this whole process down to one thing. This is a dog bone. Without this dog bone, we could not do what we have to do. Kids study hard in school so they can make objects like this. This has got one purpose in life. This is good for one use and one use only. It will hold Brian at full power with the brakes off. He'll sit here all afternoon if we want him to. Fire the catapult and the dog bone breaks perfectly in the middle and Brian goes aviating. So without this, Brian can't go anywhere. It's sailor proof. It is color coded and this end will only fit in his airplane. If it's another airplane, it's a different size because it has to have a different tensile strength break. Okay? So we've got him tied here. Now we're going to bring him up and cock the cat or bring him into tension. So our green fellow is going to contact eyeball to eyeball with a guy over here in the catwalk. He's going to bring the shuttle up, hook him up in the shuttle, get tension on the cat, and when he does, we will signal him that he's good. And our catwalk petty officer will play 7-Eleven clerk at midnight. He'll put his hands up in the air and says, okay, the cat's ready to go. It is armed. And I'm not moving my hands until you tell me to. At that point in time, here comes the cat officer. This is what he lives for. He's an aviator. This is his shipboard tour. And all he does all day is shoot airplanes off the front end of this thing. That's why we call him the shooter. He comes up. He looks up at Brian and goes, turn him up. Brian goes to full power, puts his feet on the floor, wipes out the cockpit with a stick, makes sure the controls are free, looks down at his gauges, and if everything is in the green, he turns to the cat officer, he signals him, gives him a smart salute, puts his head back in the headrest, hand on the stick in the right position, and he waits. Doesn't have to wait very long. If everything is good, the catapult officer goes down, touches the deck, my 7-Eleven guy over here reaches down, punches the button. Two and a half seconds later, Brian is out there flying. And the next guy's coming up. Any questions? Is it full power? Is it really full power or burner? If this, this airplane does not have a burner. If okay. it's burner, he will go into burner. And the glass door is rated for full burner? Yep. It's actually water cooled. They run water through, yeah. Go ahead. When the dog bone breaks, where is it? Half of it stays on board the airplane and the other half stays in the holdback bar. And we do we do the right thing. We take it out of the holdback bar, flip it over the end of the, off the deck of the ship. <laughs> if it's the guy's first launch, first time he's been catted off in that particular swamp, they give him the other half. He polishes it all up and it goes in that drawer that guys have, you know? <laughs> you know. Important yeah, important things yeah. that you just cannot live without. Yeah, there it is. I remember the time that, yes, goes in that drawer. Some things don't change. Any other questions?